Good morning. Welcome to our second, our, excuse me, our fourth session of Hashtag Help and Sunline Live. We're so glad you took the time to join us this morning. Please sign into the chat box, uh, mute yourself if you're not speaking, and you can enter any questions into the chat box and we'll answer them at the Q&A segment, uh, segment at the end of the presentation. Um, the link for this session's uploaded video will be on Hashtag Help and Send Law uh, YouTube channel and it will be sent out uh, probably this afternoon after the session is complete. Please remember that our Hashtag Help and Send Law YouTube channel is a one-stop shop for resources throughout our region and can be accessed by visiting youtube.com and searching Hashtag Help and Send Law. Just make sure you include that hashtag. So this morning we'd like to welcome Destiny Konefke as our first presenter. Destiny is the Regional Transportation Safety Planner with the Rapids Area Planning Commission, as well as the Regional Coordinator for the Sun Law Highway Safety Co Coalition. She's been in transportation safety for four years and is passionate about decreasing the number of fatalities on our roadways through education, outreach, and infrastructure safety improvements. She's a certified child passenger safety technician and advocates for proper car seat usage within our community. Partnering with regional stakeholders and safety advocates, she strives to make our roads safer for all users, including drivers, cyclists, pedestrians, and children. Welcome, Destiny. Good morning. Um, so as she said, my name is Destiny. I am the coordinator for the Sun Law Highway Safety Coalition. Um, before we jump in, I did want to preface that the data that is pulled for this presentation is from 2019 to 2021. Um, the 2021 data is not yet finalized, but um, at this point in time, um, any changes that will be done by the end of the year will probably be um, very minimal, maybe a few crashes. So this is um, as close as we could get. Um, so we'll go ahead and jump in. Um, we're going to do the state and regional data and then some other information on underage impaired driving. So we go to the next slide. So a little bit about what I do first. Um, I am, like I said, the coordinator for the Highway Safety Coalition for the Central Region. We are one of nine transportation safety coalitions in the state. We all fall under the campaign uh, title of Destination Zero Deaths. We are contracted through the Department of Transportation who gets funding from the Federal Highway Administration and we partner with state police and the Louisiana Highway Safety Commission. Um, we cover 10 parishes in central Louisiana, which you'll see listed there. Um, we do have, I think, two more parishes than the Human Services District. So um, I did want to mention that as well. Um, next slide, please. So the goal of our coalition is to reduce the number of traffic related fatalities and serious injuries by developing uh, regional action plans that focus on the specific problems uh, facing the central region. So we have five different emphasis areas. We do young drivers, impaired driving, occupant protection, distracted driving, and infrastructure and operations. So we'll go ahead and jump into the data and I'll try to keep this brief, but I have broken it down into several different, um, different uh, aspects. So go to the next one, please. So we're gonna start with the state overview. So like I said, this is 2019 through 2021, 17.9% um, of all fatal crashes in Louisiana between those three years involved impaired driving. So if you'll see at the top, it says total fatal crashes. So that's total fatal crashes within those three years um, within the state. So that's 2,307. Um, and then it's got total suspected serious injuries next to that. And if you go down impaired driving fatalities, there were 919 crashes and 1,011 people involved in those crashes that lost their lives. So the impaired driving serious injuries next to that, it's 683 crashes with a total of 870 people involved. So that means 40.4% 40, of all the state fatalities involved alcohol and then 19.17% um, of serious injuries involved alcohol. So next slide, please. So if we break that down into the underage impaired driving, 
These are just a few little quick facts. 76 people under the age of 21 lost their lives um, in crashes where alcohol was involved. That includes passengers and drivers. So this is 27, a little over 27% of all fatalities under the age of 21 for those three years. Uh, 25 of those fatalities were the drivers. So that was drivers under the age of 21. And you see it's broken down into the age groups of 15 to 17 and 18 to um, 20. So almost 9% of all fatalities under the age of 21 um, were drivers that were impaired. So under that, we have 117 people under the age of 21 were seriously injured in those crashes and 34 of those were the drivers. So this is broken down into demographics for the state. Um, if you'll see on the left-hand side right there, impaired driving fatalities, that's broken down into the ages of one to 14 years old, which was 23. 15 to 17 year olds was uh, 16 with three drivers. 18 to 20 year olds was 37 with 22 drivers. And then underneath that, you'll see the um, uh, suspected serious injuries. So if you can see on the chart in the middle, um, on the left-hand side where it says age range, you can see the um, crashes or the fatalities broken down by age. And then in the center, you'll see the race. And then on the opposite side, you'll see sex. So we did have, majority of it was Caucasian and African-American um, males. So, um, and you'll see 21 to 24, we do include those in our young driver's definition, but underneath that, um, there was about 137. Next slide, please. So the regional overview, we break that down into region. And like I said, um, I have 10 different parishes through the central region. Um, I think it's recording on there. Do you want me to start the recording? It's recording on yours, I believe. But sorry. You can we're having some technical difficulties. We'll be back up in just a moment. Oh, it's got me back up. Let me share my screen. Bear with us for just a moment. down. No, did it just kick me out again? Okay, we were down. Where are we at? Here, yes. Okay. There we go. Okay, we're good? Okay, we'll jump back into it. Um, okay, so regional overview for young impaired driving. Um, as you can see at the bottom, again, it's broken down into age, race, and sex. 
So in our region, you'll see a big chunk of the um, impaired driving issue that we have is between 21 and 24, but there are some that are underneath that. Um, and then Caucasian and male is a big chunk of the crashes that we have. And on the right-hand side, you'll see those are the parishes. The darker the parish, the higher the number. Um, so at the top of that, you can see it's broken down into different um, injury rates. So it has fatal, suspected serious injury, suspected minor injury, um, possible, not apparent, and not reported. So you'll see a majority of the impaired driving crashes that we have were fatal. So we can go to the next one. And these were drivers only. Um, so some national statistics, um, arrest under the age of 18 for driving under the influence nationally, um, there were 3,092, 3, and this is from 2019, um, and the state we had 21. So arrest, uh, the total for driving under the influence was about uh, 5,500 for the state, and you can see the much larger number, obviously, for the national um, total alcohol impaired driving fatalities for our state was 220 for that year. Um, nationally, it was a little over 10,000. And then the impaired driving fatalities under 21 were 15 for the state and a little over 900 for national. Um, and then the bottom is the percent under 21 of alcohol impaired driving fatalities total under 21. So you can see we're right under the national, which is good. The number is still, you know, unacceptable to have any, but it, it, we are slightly below the national percentage. And then you'll see um, on the right-hand side, the 10-year number from 2010 to 2019 was the change in the under 21 alcohol impaired driving fatalities per 100K. Um, so you'll see Louisiana, um, and those are supposed to be negatives. I'm sorry. I think I'm, I mistyped uh, that. But Louisiana is negative 26%, and nationally it was negative 14%. So we have decreased it over the last 10 years, um, which, like I said, that's that's good news. But we still have some work to do. So next slide. So that's all the data that I have. Um, so now that we've identified the problem, what can we do? Next slide, please. So one of the things that the state has done is um, implement a graduated driver's license um, system. So you can see it, it breaks it down into the ages of 15, 16, and 17, all with different restrictions. But if you'll notice at the top, um, with Louisiana, we have a zero tolerance policy for underage DUI charges. The penalties for drinking and driving under the age include for your first conviction, um, up to a $250 fine, loss, immediate loss of your driver's license, plus court proved uh, substance abuse and driver education programs and possible jail time. So that is a deterrent, but there are other things that we can do. So next slide, please. So some of the things that work, um, minimum, minimum legal drinking age, um, which every state has that I'm aware of. Um, so that is one thing we are not allowed to sell to minors, um, which is a good deterrent. Zero tolerance laws, like I mentioned, the GDL, um, but the biggest one is parent and guardian involvement. Um, we do not have a support system if we don't have the parents or guardians involved. So if we go to the next slide. So some of the things that guardians or parents can do to um, combat this issue is to, first of all, foster a regular and productive communication. So try to be open with them, try to ask open-ended questions, ask why the child is interested in drinking in the first place, make sure they know they're being heard, um, always, always make sure that they understand the negative consequences of alcohol, not only legally or socially, but also physically, um, health-wise. Um, always be uh, empathetic and compassionate. And if there is a history of addiction in your family, know that your child has a much greater risk of developing this problem. So always address these issues calmly and directly. 
communicate clear expectations with the child, um, discuss and agree on consequences, help them understand, like I said, the legal consequences, explain why uh, drinking is very different from a child to an adult because there is a huge difference. There is a reason why we have that 21 year old drinking age um, and then keep an eye on how they are coping. Next one. And the biggest thing, never allow your child to drive if you think they may at any point in the day or night have alcohol. So some things that you can do is offer to drop them off or pick them up if they're going to a party. Um, if that's too embarrassing for them, you can always offer to pay for their Uber or share ride, which we are getting more of in this region. Um, and always, always make sure that they know that they can call you if they get into a bad position. If they're in a party, they start drinking, they weren't expecting to. Um, their, uh, their driver that they were supposed to stay sober decided to start drinking. You know, Make sure they know that they can call you um, for any kind of help that they need. So that open communication is key. So here's some resources that I did want to offer. Um, first of all, the destination zero death.com. That is, like I said, our coalition campaign. Um, so we have a lot of information on there, uh, especially for, you know, different parts of the state. It's kind of broken into the different, uh, coalitions. So drugfree.org is good, responsibility.org, MAD and SAD, those are two of our partners that we work with. Sudden Impact Louisiana, I think they have a Facebook page. I'm, I'm not sure that they have a website, but they are a very good um, organization that uh, does a lot of presentations at schools. And then NHTSA for the risky driving and the drunk driving. Um, and the LSU CARTS data dashboards, I did want to just kind of throw this in there. The data that I pulled is able to be broken down into different parishes. Um, and we do have opportunities to train other people on, the, on using those dashboards. So if you are interested in the data and you want to get some training on how to use those dashboards and pull the data for your you know, separate parishes or your different region, um, I am definitely available for that. And then that is pretty much all I have. Um, if you want to go to Destination Zero Deaths, we've got, like I said, a lot of information on there. Um, underneath that is our actual coalition website. You can scan the code and it'll take you straight to it. We have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have Instagram. So please feel free to follow us, share any of, any of our posts, use our hashtag. And then my uh, contact information is listed on the other side. So if anybody has any questions or wants to get with me for some dashboard training or needs additional data, you can always contact me um, through any of those. And probably my cell phone and email is the best bet. Um, but that's all I have. So thank you guys for allowing me the chance to talk about this. Thank you so much, Destiny. And please remember that we'll answer any questions at the end during the Q&A session. And uh, so we're going to welcome our next presenter, uh, Milton Bilberry. He's the Director of Enforcement with the Louisiana Department of Alcohol and Tobacco Control. A native of du Dubach, Louisiana and graduate of Dubach High School, Director Bilberry served 24 years active duty with the Louisiana Army National Guard, serving in numerous capacities and deploying to various countries. Director Bilberry retired from the military in 2012 at the rank of Sergeant Major. After retirement, Director Bilberry went through the Alexandria Regional Police Academy and worked for the Alexandria Police Department for two years. In 2014, he began working with the Louisiana Department of Alcohol and Tobacco Control as an enforcement agent covering the 10 parishes of Central Louisiana. In 2019, Director Bilberry was promoted to special agent in charge for the northern 29 parishes of the state. In October 2021, Director Bilberry was again promoted to his current position of Chief Director of Enforcement overseeing the Louisiana ATC Enforcement Division, responsible for enforcement of all alcohol, tobacco, and consumable hemp laws at wholesale and retail permitted locations throughout the state of Louisiana. The Louisiana ATC Enforcement Division ensures that permitted locations are in lawful compliance with fair trade laws and works to prevent underage access to alcohol, tobacco, and consumable hemp. Director Bill Berry holds a Bachelor's of Public Administration with an emphasis in law enforcement and is a graduate of the United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy. 
Director Bilberry is married to Tina Bilberry, and they have three daughters, Caitlin, Courtney, and Morgan. Welcome, Director Bilberry. Thank you, ma'am. So on, on behalf of Commissioner Leger, uh, Deputy Commissioner uh, Deatrice Henderson, uh, our Chief Legal Counsel Linda Pham, myself, uh, thank you for having me here today um, to do a, a quick informational briefing on uh, what we do at ATC as, as well as going into uh, the prom season that we're in now with the, the kids in school. Next slide, please. And go ahead again. Next slide. Um, the enforcement division uh, for ATC, if we hit the next slide, is broken down into four regions in the state. Um, each one of those regions has uh, the, a director uh, and they have a special agent in charge, uh, as well as the enforcement agents that are, are broken down into each parishes. Um, if you see there across the northern 29 parishes, uh, it looks like significantly a lot, but the um, amount of permits in those 29 parishes um, don't equal the amount of permits per se in New Orleans or in uh, say Lake Charles, uh, because of our, our rule, how, how spread out it is there. We, we cover more mileage, but we have less permitted locations. Uh, next slide, please. So like I said, the three areas that we have of enforcement is the alcohol enforcement, tobacco enforcement, consumable hemp, and we also fall under the state's uh, disaster uh, plan, the, the GOSEP plan for disaster assistance with the state. Uh, we use uh, Title uh, Administrative Code 55, Louisiana Revised Statutes 3, 14, 26, 40. Uh, also, we have the local and uh, city and parish ordinances and the state all hazard plan there. Uh, some of our methods of enforcement, we initially go out to the businesses uh, when they're initially getting their permit to make sure the businesses meet the permit qualifications before we give them a permit. We also use uh, the annual retail and wholesale inspections where we're make, main, uh, ensuring the businesses are maintaining their permit qualifications and their fair, fair trade practice laws. Uh, we look for other things on the license premise, such as serving, selling to underage, over-serving alcohol, illegal drug activity on the alcohol, um, the possibility of human trafficking, human trafficking that may be taking place in some of the, um, the permitted locations. Um, and again, we investigate all complaints that come into us. Uh, we have some businesses that we receive complaints on weekly. Um, and unfortunately, those businesses get visited weekly. Uh, sometimes they think it's harassment, but as long as we're getting complaints on them, we keep going back to those businesses. Next slide. Uh, we provide education. Uh, we have the Responsible Vendor Program where we require uh, the servers and um, clerks in the stores and restaurants to be responsible vendor certified. They have to be responsible vendor certified within 45 days of their first day of employment, whether that's an in-person class or that's an online class, they can take it either way, uh, but we require them to, to have that. Uh, in the event of an underage sale of alcohol, um, that responsible vendor class, uh, by them having it, they will receive a, an administrative citation to go through an administrative court in Baton Rouge. If they don't have the responsible vendor certification, uh, it results in a criminal citation that goes through district courts. Um, can go back one. Um, the big thing we got there is on the last one, the underage prevention and compliance checks. Uh, the special events, parades, fairs, festivals, sports events, large scale celebrations, more on those, we're seeing a significantly more uh, of these special event permits this year. We've been locked down for COVID for the last two years where festivals and things were canceled. Uh, this year, um, every special event that could possibly come about is coming about, all the parades, festivals, uh, people are ready to get out of their house and, and do things. So we've ramped up uh, this weekend. We have uh, agents at the Strawberry Festival in Ponchatoula. Uh, last weekend, we had agents in New Orleans with the Final Four. Um, we got um, the weekend before, there were 10 festivals specifically in New Orleans alone that we had um, agency in at one time, which presents a, a large uh, amount of not only underage sales, uh, as again, with the retailers. Um, also, we have what we call them hawkers, the, the ones that are on the street selling alcohol illegally. 
during these events that uh, that's a lot of times where the underage are getting their alcohol from. So we shutting those to shut those down as well. Uh, some of the current trends that we see uh, with the underage sales, um, it, it still is a huge thing is purchased on behalf of minors. Um, whether it be a parent purchasing on behalf of minors, big brothers, big sisters, cousins, uh, occasionally we'll find somebody sitting outside the stores that's willing to go in the store and purchase alcohol for the minors. Uh, we write those persons criminal citations for those underage purchases um, outside of those stores. Um, hawkers at special events, we will shut them down. Um, the COVID, um, one of the big ones we have right now is online purchases and alcohol delivery. Uh, during COVID, kids found out that they can go to Walmart and get a um, Visa gift card and they can go online and order the alcohol and have it delivered to the house. And it's delivered to the house before mom and dad get home. Um, the mom and dad never know that it happened when UPS FedEx shows up. Uh, so we've been working with FedEx, UPS, and those delivery companies um, the, to make sure that they are also checking the alcohol and checking for underage, uh, checking the IDs of the person receiving it, as well as making sure that the packages are clearly labeled because it has alcohol in it. Uh, a new one that's coming about is alcohol delivery, where we have some of the um, food industries the, that are have alcohol delivery permits uh, in conjunction with purchases of food. Uh, again, we're doing underage checks with those as well where we're, we have our underage kids that work for us are actually ordering the alcohol with us there and having it delivered to a, a, a location. And um, then we look at those drivers, or are they checking the IDs or not checking the IDs? Um, some of the additional education we do, we have agents that go out. This was down at the Crawfish Festival in Chalmette last week or two weekends ago, uh, where agents go to the permit holders uh, we educate them. We try to go to those special events. So if you have special events in your areas where um, people are going to be selling alcohol, special event permits are, are going to be, where the fairs, festivals, um, we are more than happy to come out before the event takes place and educate the servers that are going to be working these booths. A lot of times the booths, are, these are volunteers that uh, come from many different backgrounds that aren't uh, normal servers of alcohol. We educate them on the vertical horizontal driver's license, the difference between the two uh, tips that they can use to determine uh, rapidly if the kid is underage or not, as well as the LA wallet app that's on their phone that is uh, required to be taken now. This is a, uh, a Mardi Gras parade in uh, New Road, uh, where we had a large group of kids that uh, consuming alcohol on side of the road there. Uh, probably one of the most, most disheartening thing for the kid is to make the kid pour out all their alcohol in front of all their friends. Um, so we have them pour out their alcohol if they're under the age of 18. Then we'll contact the parents to have to come and get their kids. If they're over 18, then we cite them for minor possession of alcohol. And uh, after they have uh, destroyed their alcohol products, um, probably the most disheartening thing for them is they're, they're more worried about having to pour out their alcohol than getting the citation. Um, the other one for the younger ones is having to call their parents, especially their parent. Uh, in this instant here, the parent was actually on a Mardi Gras float that had to get off the float to come get their kid. Uh, the mother was, was quite mad when she got there uh, for, for her kid drinking underage there. Okay. Uh, a little bit about the tobacco enforcement. Uh, with us, um, the law changed last year, so now... Um, Tobacco, all tobacco products, anything from dip snuffs to cigarettes to alternative nicotine products to vapor products to even paraphernalia and devices are, are now 21. They brought that in line uh, with the alcohol, which makes it a lot easier on the uh, businesses. They're not having to determine uh, 18 for cigarettes, 21 for uh, alcohol. Uh, so it's all uh, 21 now, which makes it a lot easier. We've actually seen a uh, slight reduction in the underage sales uh, because the clerks aren't as confused. They're claiming that they're confused uh, between one age and the other. The next one, uh, consumable hemp is the new one. This is probably one of the biggest things with our kids around right now and that we're fighting and uh, we're working diligently. Uh, we have about 1,700 um, 
permitted locations across the state uh, that sell consumable hemp at the moment. Vape and the consumable hemp is illegal. Uh, we're finding it in stores. When we find it, we seize it and we cite that business. That business is a mandatory hearing that they have to go to in Baton Rouge, that business owner. Um, and those, those are, are quite costly uh, violations for the vape. But that's probably the biggest one that we're seeing. The biggest problem that we're seeing is the vape um, because some of it is odorless and colorless. A uh, kid can sit in the classroom at school and with the vape pen in their sweatshirt and take a puff on the vape pen, put it back in there and blow the XL into their sweatshirt and the teacher never know. Uh, some of these vapes uh, are, have uh, THC, uh, high concentrations of THC. Uh, we've seen it as much as 92.8% THC, 96% THC. Um, if you take a standard, uh, typical marijuana joint, it's about 7% THC. The really good stuff is about 22, 23%. So you have some of this vape products that's a liquid uh, THC in these things that's um, it, like I said, 80, 90, uh, almost 100% THC. If you take the consumer that consumes uh, marijuana on a regular basis, it's not as big a product, problem. But if you take a uh, you know, 15, 16, 14-year-old high school cheerleader that's about 95 pounds, has zero body fat, it, it rocks their world pretty good. Uh, they end up at the hospitals. Another one that we have uh, is the hemp flower, um, which is a product that's supposed to be... Uh, uh, ground and used for topical use to extract the oils out of it. Um, so they claim uh, most of it is, uh, and I noticed that's got flour spelled there wrong, um, but the flour, uh, it looks like, it smells like. Uh, if you do a field test kit for law enforcement, it will test positive. A dog will alert on it for marijuana. Um, but for it to be legal, it has to be less than 0.3% THC. Uh, so one of the things that we look for on those products is uh, on the LDH's website. They have a list of the products that are approved to be sold in Louisiana. Any products that we find that are not on the LDH's web, the website, we cite those businesses and again, seize those products from them. Um, the probably one of the biggest ones we have are the edibles. Uh, with the edibles, uh, kids can go online and um, buy these. They... Um, there anything uh, and I've got PowerPoints that we can do presentations for y'all anything from Cheetos that have uh, hemp in the Cheetos to different type of candies that the uh, they look just like uh, there's one that uh, looks just like a bag of Skittles, but it's actually Skittles that are uh, that have hemp and and, uh, and and laced basically with marijuana. Um, we had a school up in uh, Bienville Parish a couple of weeks ago, uh, made the news. They had five kids between the age of 13 and 14 that went to the hospital. Um, when we investigated where they got the edibles from, um, they, one of the kids had actually bought it when they were on a family vacation a few weeks before in Oklahoma, brought it back. They ate it at school, uh, divided between the, the boys, um, and all four of the boys ended up in the hospital uh, up there over the edibles. Um, it's marketed towards kids. Uh, that's where we have the problem with it is, is the way that it's marketed. Uh, so those are some of the things with the consumable hemp. Next one. Uh, before I say the end of the presentation, um, with prom and homecoming just going around, uh, we are going to schools. Uh, if we're contacted, uh, we're reaching out to some of the locations, some of the schools. We've had several churches that have called us with their youth groups asking us to come and do presentations for alcohol. Uh, we were more than happy to go to whatever school, whatever church, uh, you have Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, any other organization to do presentations on the uh, on alcohol. Uh, you know, I, one of the things I, I taught uh, one at Grace uh, Christian here in Alexandria a couple of weeks ago, and uh, you know, one of the things I told them and we talked about in it is, is choices and decision making. We talk about prom, homecomings, and probably the three worst decisions that kids make during uh, proms, homecomings, are alcohol, drugs, or uh, sex, um, and the, the three decisions that are, are, are life-changing. Uh, we also talked to them in those, that presentation that most of these are 17 and 18 years old, 
and they uh, they play by big people rules. So it's not necessarily mom and dad coming to get them. Uh, they may be going to jail, uh, whether it's alcohol or uh, uh, drug related. Another one I want to talk about real quick is uh, uh, the purchasing of alcohol on behalf of minors, which is one of our bigger problems. Um, I know Miss Destiny said a few minutes ago with uh, the, the parent involvement, um, which is absolutely the probably the biggest thing with it. But also we have a problem with parents that are purchasing alcohol for their kids, um, thinking that, you know, maybe they think that they're, they're keeping it a safe environment by having providing alcohol and they all come to the house. But the problem is those kids leave that house and uh, they're, they're on the roads after consuming alcohol. In Louisiana, there's four times that alcohol is legal to be sold under the age of, or to, correct, not sold, but to be legal to be consumed under the age of 21. One is during a religious activity. Um, that's during the religious activity itself. That doesn't mean in the event hall behind the church, two hours after church. Um, the second one is in the presence of a parent or legal guardian or their spouse. Uh, as long as the parent, legal guardian, spouse is over the age of 21, um, they can purchase alcohol in a restaurant for that person that's under 21 to consume the alcohol. Um, the question that I always ask the, uh, those uh, managers in those restaurants is how do you know that that's their parent has to, how, uh, or their, their spouse or their um, legal guardian? You know, how many people go around with the birth certificate of the child with them? Um, so uh, the restaurants do have the option not to sell if that's their policy. Uh, if they don't feel comfortable selling it, they don't have to sell, uh, which we get in dispute with businesses sometimes, but the business does have the option not to sell. Um, and then the last one, or the next two, uh, one is uh, under medical uh, prescription, alcohol can be consumed. And then the last one is at private residence. Private residence is where we have a lot of the problems. Parents think that they will buy the alcohol for the kid and they're going to have the party at their house. A parent can allow their child to drink. They can't allow someone else's child to drink at their house. Uh, so when they're having these parties, if you have 10 kids at the house and all 10 parents are there and they want to let them drink, it's legal. If um, they, they can't write a letter saying that they're allowing their child to drink there, they have to be in the presence of their parent. Another one is like when we go to LSU football games during tailgating. If that child is right there, that person under 21 is standing there beside their parent, they're fine. If they're on the opposite side of the Tiger Stadium, they're not in the presence of their parent. Um, at that time, we would write that uh, that underage person the citation for a modern possession of alcohol. Um, but again, if anybody would needs or wants uh, presentations, I'm more than happy to reach out to me. Uh, most people have my number. If not, uh, Miss Kitty has my number. The, the ladies here have my number, contact information. Um, and it, it doesn't matter what time, day or night, weekend, Sundays, we'll, we'll make it happen to do the presentations um, for businesses uh, or for the, the youth. Uh, if a business wants to ha have uh, their managers together, they want to have their employees together, uh, a lot of bars, when the bars open up, they will contact us. They'll bring in all their bartenders together at one time. And we'll go over and explain to them how to check IDs, what to look for in underage, how to determine if the IDs are fake IDs. Uh, but whatever education that we can provide, we're more than happy to come out and provide that education. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to move to question and answers. So if you have any question, you can put it in the chat or you can raise your hand and we will call on you. Hey, um, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Brenda. Um, and I don't really have a question. I just have a comment that this is such great information. I wish all parents would hear this um, because being the cool mom can have such adverse effects on people, especially when they are 
allowing underage drinking or people come over to that house because that mom, the cool mom allows drinking. If they only knew the lawsuits they can have and that kids who grow up that way, I have a friend like that and she's struggling now with a 30 year old child who just cannot get, just can't get his act together. And being a parent is our job, not being a friend. So I'm off my soapbox, but I love the <laughs> and, and just how just so pertinent and important it is. Thank you. If you don't mind me adding a little bit to that. Um, yeah, I think in those cases where the, the parents want to be, you know, the, the cool mom or whatever, they need to be extremely aware of the physical, um, you know, complications that alcohol has with, and I mean, like I said earlier, there's a reason why there's the 21 year old drinking limit. Um, it's because if you're under that, your body, <clears throat> your body accepts alcohol differently than it does an adult. So they need to be aware of, of things like that because it's it, it does have an effect other than just legally. It's 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 definitely a physical thing too. Well, a child's brain doesn't stop developing until age 25 or thereabouts. And if you if you have a child that's very academic and wants to go to college, I would encourage them to look into the um, chemical alteration of the brain by consuming alcohol at a young age. And Ms. Brenda, thank you for helping me get into schools. Uh, Ms. Brenda is one of the big assets in helping get into schools, especially here around the Alexandria Rapid Parish area. Well, we can also help with that in rural parishes as well. Oh, yeah, because we, we need you over here in the walls. We have that serious, serious issues with the social hosting. You know. Also, we have a, a presentation that we'll do for specifically for teachers. Um, for things to look for with this the uh, the consumable hemp with the vaping and these uh, gummies and edibles and things that the kids are bringing to schools with them now. Uh, we don't do that presentation with the kids because we don't want to put plant seeds in their heads. Right. But we will right. specifically with teachers, Georgetown High School uh, asked for it, Buckeye High School asked for it. Uh, we've done both of those here in the last month. Well, I'm sure we can help you out on that over here, too. Uh, just yesterday, okay. I did a presentation over at Bulls High School, and they just had the uh, vaping monitors installed in the school so that right. they'll be able to know now if, if kids are bringing in vapes. And so uh, I think they would probably uh, welcome anything like that. So I'll be in touch with you, and we'll see about maybe making arrangements for them. Good deal. Yes, ma'am. Did anyone else have any questions? Comments? Okay, well, if no one else has anything to add, we'll go on and adjourn. Um, thank you to all of our presenters and to everyone for tuning into this session of Hashtag Help and Send Law Live. This session will be available shortly on our Hashtag Help and Send Law YouTube channel. You can access that channel again by visiting youtube.com and searching hashtag help and send law. Uh, you can also subscribe to our channel to be alerted when new videos are uploaded. And remember that if your agency would like to highlight its services, you're welcome to send in a video to be uploaded to the channel. Um, you can email me or you can shoot an email to help and send law at gmail.com for some guidelines and suggestions on creating that video. Our next session will be, I'm going to put the graphic up. Our next session will be on Friday, May 20th. We'll be back to the third um, Friday of the month um, from 1030 to 1130, and we'll be discussing life skills. So uh, we look forward to seeing you all then, and thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you. Y'all have a great weekend. Thank you. You too.